And the worst part is the, uh, the reforms included um, because the banner people, the, you know, the, the daughters that can become the empresses, they are also the people who fought for the Qing uh, government you know, to take over the rest of China. So th they actually didn't have to work. They always got paid. So it's, it's, kind of like a, it's kind of like a racial pension. If you are a better person, you will, uh, the, the, the government will pay for everything for you. So these are a bunch of you know, very, very lazy and useless people, right? So for example, like we talk about like the Banner Army, so they're paid because they're supposed to continue to fight, right? They were like, they, um, they, uh, like an American missionary actually went to one of their camps and were like, this looked like a giant brothel slash gambling joint. It looked nothing like an army camp. And so these are very useless people that, you know, like a grand total army, including the, the, the green banner of like 750,000. They spent about 20 million tails of silver a year, which is kind of the amount for the building the whole of the Navy Beiyang fleet. And so uh, Guangxu did the most logical thing. Okay, end of pension, end of this racial pension. And also these and also any of the departments that didn't make sense, for example, that this department f to um, govern vessel states, then the number of vessel states, we lost all of them, right? Okay, that, that's out. Uh, some of the departments in Shenyang, which is where the old Manchurian court was, we don't need that, right? So let's cut that. So when you cut all of that, everybody was very angry, right? So this is, I think this is why most reformers in Chinese culture, uh, in Chinese history, never works. And they always die very horrendous deaths. And th this is because of this. A regime is supported by a certain amount of people, you know, some people. And these people, because, of, because they supported the establishment of this regime, would then be given special interests. And as the years go by, these special interests uh, create an inefficiency in the government system. And this inefficiency will then lead to a reformer trying to change it. And as they try to change it, it touches upon the special interests of the people who are supposed to support the regime, the core. And so when that happens, the, the, the reformer will then die a very horrendous death. So this, eh, we can name you about 10 examples of that in, in Chinese history. It, so, so this case is exactly the same. Unfortunately, the, this case, the reformer is the emperor himself. And so who were the angriest people, the Manchurians? What is the Qing dynasty? A Manchurian dynasty. So go figure. And then from, from then on, uh, so one of the biggest trigger points was uh, it, we come to September. So the whole, whole country was like in a mess. And just to give you a little bit of um, a background, was Qi Cixi against the reform? We were we, we, we this little case where as they were trying to change the Bagu system, a person called uh, Gang said this is a bad idea. So Gang and the emperor went to the Empress Dowager in the Summer Palace, and the, as, uh, but the Empress Dowager actually was on the side of Guangxu, supported him to change the system. So there's absolutely no physical, like no at least documentational evidence that the Empress Dowager was against um, the reform. A lot of people then say, like, especially, I think, I think it's one of this Chinese chauvinistic thing where you know, we have to somehow talk down on some of the, some of the women who have ruled China. And so they say, oh, Cixi, Empress Dowager, did that on purpose. To, is a trap to trap Guangxi, but like, unless she had like 2020 vision to the future, there was absolutely no way to tell. So there's absolutely no basis whatsoever. So uh, Guangxi uh, was given a, a, a quite a bit of leeway by the Empress Dowager, but by September, there's this guy called Wang. It's, uh, let's not confuse anybody with more names, but this guy tried to get the, uh, uh, the, the em uh, told the Emperor and the Empress Dowager should go to um, like, like Europe to you know, visit and learn, kind of like the Peter the Great went to like Holland and England or something like that, right? And, um, and that document, because that guy was too low down, had to go through the, he was in the Department of Manners uh, to go through. And at the time, the, uh, the, the top guy, is called Huai Tabu, was not, he was a Manchurian, so he was obviously not happy with the new, uh, the, the, uh, all these new policies. So he didn't let that document go to the emperor. The emperor then knew about it, and so, Emperor was furious, and just like what the emperor did in general, he fired all six of them at the same time. And so Huai Tabu was, you know, that's why the whole Manchurian community was uproar, especially Huai Tabu's wife played mahjong with Empress Dowager. Now, playing mahjong is more than just playing mahjong. It's never about the mahjong. It's one way for corruption. 
So it's kind of like, it's kind of like, oh, this is a, you know, you've got a drone, you've got a, like a, one of the, one of those like, I don't want this, you can put it here. And then, and then and the average style will be like, oh, I got it. So, so it's, it's one way to channel the resources that, they, that the Manchurian elite got to the Empress Dowager. And, 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 so, and so, when the, so, when your, so when your Mahjong buddy is not, when your Mahjong buddy is not happy because her husband got fired, the Empress Dowager was not happy. And at the same time, uh, Guangxu wanted the Empress Dowager to let him to open a little academy inside the, inside the Forbidden City called the um, Mao Qin Dian which is basically his way of creating his own political base. And obviously, the, the Empress Dowager had none of that. So, so the, 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 the two clashed horribly. And when that happened, there was, a, um, the, the, there was, there was talk that Cixi would like to move uh, Guangxu. And this is especially from Kang and Liang. They were thinking that. And so the Empress Dowager had none of that. So by, 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 by mid-September, actually, and this is, this is where the, the case of history is very difficult to tell. Uh, the, uh, the Guangxu wrote a, royal de a secret royal decree to Yang. And according to uh, Kang Youwei, because he, he showed it to his buddies, his buddies and also Kang and Liang, and, 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 and that the, um, the, empress, the, the emperor said, I'm in grave danger. The emperor's dowager is going to dispose me. So you have to come and save me. This is, this is, this is, uh, the official, this is a lot of, this actually, even up to today, most Chinese people would think that that's the, 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 the version. But now we know, because t 10 years after, uh, after this happened in 1908, when both uh, Empress Dowager and Guangxu died, uh, Yang's son uh, took out the, um, the document, and basically it says, um, this reform is not going so well. Kang's ideas are way too radical. There must be something to be done. But Kang twisted the whole thing and twisted the whole thing. And so he, he started to do something very, very dangerous. He got, a bun he got, he got his buddies and said, you know, the only way to, to, get this ref to get my reform done that's you know, so great reform done is if the emperor had absolute power. And the person that is stopping him from having the absolute power is Empress Dowager. And so, when, when, so we are going to uh, find our own military uh, power, uh, surround the uh, Summer Palace, and have one of my gangster friends, Bi Yongnan, to kill the Empress Dowager. Okay, so who was the military support that they were going to get? So they got Tan to go and talk to Yuan Shikai. Yuan Shikai, because he had given money to Kang, and he had, he's always been very... Um, supportive of Ch China's reform. And he was in Beijing at the time because the emperor actually got him to go to Beijing. And also the, uh, the ex-Japanese uh, uh, Prime Minister Ito, you know, the guy who was in charge of all the, uh, the, the military campaign. They were both in, in Beijing. Ito was supposed to meet the emperor. A few days later, Yuan already met the emperor. And the emperor actually, made, uh, actually gave him, uh, actually rose him by two ranks from a, just a someone in Zhili, in like Hebei, like today Hebei, a, just like a military officer to the uh, deputy head of the, um, uh, of, the, of the military department. So, so, so of the defense department. So uh, the, the one of the reasons is because Kang probably told the emperor that Yuan, you should you really use Yuan. Yuan can really help us. So because of that, Yuan, um, Tan talked to Yuan. And this is, again, very interesting. Tan's version, Tan, died because of this. Tan's version came from Liang. Uh, Liang. And so then Tan told Yuan to help. Yuan said, no problem. We probably can't do it now. But in November, when it, it is September at the time. So in no, by November, when the Empress Dowager and the Emperor uh, would come to Tianjin, where my, military, where, where my soldiers are, I can, go and, I can go and kill Ronglu, my boss. And we can instate uh, Guangxu to, to have the real power. So, so don't worry, just go. This is Tan's version. Yuan was like, I met the guy, we never talked much. Th this is it. So, he, and so you, you don't really know who, who told the truth. But in any case, um, by the, by, 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 uh, a few days later, um, one, of the, one of the princes, old, older princes, Prince Qing, then uh, went to the Empress Dowager and said, we cannot use uh, Kang Yue. We cannot. We just, like, he's, just, he's just way too radical. So, the, so actually, there was a decree that told Kang Youwei 
okay, do not like don't stay in Beijing. Go and do your whole reform newspaper in Shanghai. Just just go there. Go to Shanghai. And then Kang Wei didn't go. Kang Wei was actually doing like thinking about doing his whole uh, you know uh, surrounding the uh, summer palace thing. And so a few days later, the Empress Dowager came to the Forbidden City. Uh, they, 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 uh, a, a lot of this circumstantial evidence says that he, he, she already, she already put um, uh, the Guangxu under house arrest. But then, again, there's people only speculating because of the things that happened later. But basically, when that happened, Kang Wei fled. Kang Wei fled uh, uh, Beijing. Um, uh, Guangxu met with Ito, and supposedly the Empress did not want. Uh, the emperor to meet with uh, Ito, but again, there's uh, this is this is I think a lot of uh, this is just rumor, and uh, and then at that point in time, there, there there was it was from Ito's memoir is saying that Guang Xu had absolutely no energy in him, so it's probably is very close to he un he understood that his 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 power is is very much drawing to a close, and then and then a day later, um, there was a uh, there was a degree to to the decree to catch Kang to end the uh, hundred day reform. Okay? Okay, so, and then, and at that point in time, there's still no killing or whatever yet. It was supposed to just arrest Kang. It was only a day later when his younger brother, um, Kang Guangyan, his younger brother Kang Guangyan was, was arrested. That's when the emperor, that's when the empress knew about the, so, the, the, the like Guang Xu or Kang Youwei trying to kill the Empress Dowager. That's when Guang Xu was imprisoned. Okay, so and then but, but how, how can she have the power to? Because it, all, because all all, all all the all the military is under her because of Rong. Yeah, but he, he's still the emperor. No, but but he didn't have he didn't have. Uh, it, by this point. The Empress Dowager has always held the, 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 the actual power because she had the military. And don't forget, all the Manchurians hate him. <laughs> right? So again, it just goes back to my power structure. The core is very important. So now there's a, the, the, there's a huge case. Did Kang's brother tell of the, sur or, of the plot or did Yuan tell Rong? So a lot of people say, uh, so maybe both did. So at any, in any case, the, the, the reform ended, the, uh, Guangxu was imprisoned, and they arrested these four guys. Uh, 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 Kang is, and they tried to uh, arrest Liang as well, but Liang, because he wrote a lot of good stuff about the Japanese, the, the Japanese had took him in. And actually, you look at Jap the Japanese in modern history has always been very uh, receptive of whoever is against the main Chinese government, because a, 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 a stable and powerful China was not in the interest of the Japanese uh, expansion. So he, was, he went to Japan. Kang eventually went to Japan and, uh, and the rest of the world. And uh, these five guys were arrested. And then there's also another Yang who said, there's, there's absolutely no basis for you to imprison Guangxu. So he was arrested as well. And a few days later, the six of them got executed. Mainly because I think of the plot against the Empress Dowager. They were called Wu Xu because that year was the Chinese year of Wu Xu, uh, the sixth gentleman of Wu Xu. And when they were killed, in, in, uh, they were beheaded. And usually, the higher the rank, uh, the, the, um, the, 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 the less uh, sharp the, 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 the saber that, that chops your head. So they were basically. Yeah, so it's, it's very blunt. So very like so. So it's more blunt. So they, they died. They died uh, uh, in the worst state. And then so Kang and Lang fled. And Kang and Lang fled. Guangxu is imprisoned, and now Cixi is back in power. Empress said Long Yu the whole time. Long Yu. She she's kind of like she's not doing much. She's I mean, she's actually if anything she's a she's quite a kind lady. If you look at uh if you look at the things that she had done, you know she's she, you know she's uh, she's the person who. Yeah, she's probably. It's, it's she's quite sad. I mean, she she didn't she didn't ask to be married to him, but and he was very mean to her, right? So, but, then, uh, but she, yeah, she, she she understood the whole time that she was not involved in any of the plots. So she's like a harmless. Yeah, yeah. So 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 so, so down the happened to her, nothing. nothing happened to her. Nothing. Happened, uh, she was okay. But so now it's difficult because Guangxu now the Empress Dowager thinks that Guangxu did it. Mm -hmm. 
right? Because it, like it, like you would think that Guangxu did. Guo Guan, there's nothing that Guangxu could say. Kang and Liang went to abroad and keep on bad mouthing the Empress Dowager. Then the more bad mouthing, and and they're very, in some sense, very selfish people. They bad mouth her, and then they said that Guangxu is a great guy for their own political gain, right? So Kang actually got a lot of donations, and they used donations to buy a lot of different lands in uh, Shanghai and and Qingdao and, 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 and so on and so forth and had a, led a pretty good lifestyle in uh, North America because a lot of people would donate to him because he would say, I would get the money and go back and save Guangxu. And then... And then North America, didn't he get exiled in Japan? He, so they were exiled. So as they were exiled, they were bad-mouthing. So, so they were bad-mouthing um, the Empress Dowager and raising Guangxu. And, and, so, and from, from then on, the, there was a lot of overseas Chinese already at the point, right? So they tried to... Um, so they got a lot of... Um, North America and Japan, so they were going around. They're going around the world. But that's, that's also another, uh, one of the biggest effects is then, and this is always the case with academics or like, you know, scholars when they, when they, when they involve in politics, it's they, they like to make things into black and white. Mm -hmm. So the Empress Dowager was actually very smart in maintaining the balance between the old guard and the Li Hongzhangs of the world who were trying to do new things. In this case, it's horrible. It's either... You're with me to modernize, or you're against me, and you're by with default. me by, by default. Yeah. And when that happens, it, it kind of, it, it, uh, psychologically divides the country into two, and this division caused the rise of the very anti-modernizing, anti-Western, uh, very conservative force, which led directly to the Foxer Rebellion, which is going to be our next talk. Thank you.